हेलो गाइस दिस इज अदिप वेलकम टू माय चैनल मूवमेंट साइंस वेयर आई सिंपलीफाई बायो मैकेनिक्स एंड लॉट ऑफ ऑर्थो टॉपिक्स विद जो सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग आल्सो चेक मी आउट ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वेयर आई पोस्ट पिक्चर्स ऑफ माय नोट्स एंड आल्सो पुट आउट डेली एमसीक्यूज विद व्हिच यू कैन ब्रश अप योर बायो मैकेनिक्स द रेफरेंस टाइम फॉर ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर विल बी मेंशनड आउट इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन सो चेक दैट आउट एंड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड In this video, we are going to talk about the extensors of the hip joint muscle. That is the kinetics of the hip. So we have covered flexors, adductors, and abductors till now. Next will be the extensors, and after that we'll cover the medial and lateral rotators in the same video. So starting with the extensors, there is the main gluteus maximus, which we all know, and then there is the hamstring muscles, which we have also discussed in the knee joint as a knee flexor, right? So hamstring has four parts there is the biceps femoris so biceps means two heads by is two and seps is heads so that there is the two part of the four part hamstring and then semi tendinosus and semi membranosus are the other two parts so that forms your hamstring muscle and also gluteus medius helps in extension at the hip joint we will also discuss about that so let's start with the topic so starting with the gluteus maximus it is a large quadrangular muscle it is the biggest muscle in the human body and it is attached posteriorly to the sacrum also to the it band then it has also attachment to the dorsal si that is sacroiliac ligaments and also the ilium apart from that it has also attachment to the sacrotuberous ligaments and the gluteal tuberosity so it has its attachment to femur through your gluteal tuberosity then to pelvis over here at ilium then to sacrum through the ligaments and also the it band now let's look at the muscle so if you look at jo this is his gluteus maximus muscle over here it will be attached to ilium then in anteriorly to the it band over here like this then to the gluteal tuberosity over here and also the si joint it is attached to the si joint to, through the ligaments like dorsal si ligament and also the sacrotuberous ligament so going to the next part the muscle contributes to almost 12.8% of the muscle mass in the lower limb and it is a strong hip extensor so this we all know but an important point that is to be noted over here is it has a very high moment arm in neutral hip but even apart from that it has a peak extensor moment that means it can generate a lot of extension when your hip is in 70 degree of flexion so if you take jo this is his neutral hip right he can generate lot of hip extension movement with his glutes in this position but when he takes his glutes to 70 degree of flexion what will happen the glutes over here it will stretch right it will be in a slightly stretched position and this allows the muscle to generate even more force when it is in a slightly stretched position so that is a very important point that gluteus maximus can generate a lot of force when it is in 70 degree of hip flexion so this position if you remember we can also see in runners when they are getting ready for the race right they put their hip into 70 degree of flexion so that they can generate a lot of force at the start of the race going ahead your gluteus maximus can cause lateral rotation we also know that it can cause lateral rotation right so it does that but at flexion of the hip joint it has a very low moment arm to cause lateral rotation but whereas when it is in extension position it can create lateral rotation very easily because of the high moment arm it also receives assistance from the posterior fiber of the gluteus medius so that is another extra muscle which is actually an abductor but also helps in extension at the hip joint now going to the next part that is the hamstring muscles now hamstring has four parts as i said it has biceps femoris with two heads and then the semi tendinosus and semi membranosus let's look at these so all the hamstring muscles they originate from your ischial tuberosity which is there in your pelvis and from there they can go laterally or medially so on the lateral side there is biceps femoris which attaches laterally to the tibia and also the fibula okay so lateral side over here 
biceps femoris will be coming the red color and then it will be attaching to fibula and also the tibia so this is the attachment of the biceps femoris posteriorly right and then medially there is a semi tendinosus and semi membranosus again coming from the medial side and attaching so these form your hamstring group of muscles on the posterior aspect we have talked about this also in the knee joint so as we know hamstring muscles are two joint muscles so when the two joint muscle comes as we have seen throughout the hip joint series that two joint muscle whenever we are talking about we have to mention about the active and the passive insufficiency i'll make a dedicated video for that so that i don't have to mention it every time in the video so stay tuned for that so active insufficiency over here when there is active insufficiency that is basically when your hip is in extension and also knee is in flexion sorry so flexion what will happen there will be 30% reduction in force generation so your hamstring cannot effectively contract and generate force due to the active insufficiency and passive insufficiency will not allow the hamstring to stretch effectively at both the joints apart from that hip extension movement has a large movement arm for the hamstring muscles when your hip is in flexion of 35 degrees so when your hip is in 35 degree of flexion your hamstring can generate a lot of force to create hip extension what about glutes glutes have to be in 70 degree of flexion right hamstring for 35 and glutes for 70 however if you take both the joints in consideration because hamstring is a two joint muscle the optimal length tension relation position for hamstring would be 90 degree of hip flexion and 90 degree of knee flexion okay so 90 degree hip flexion and 90 degree knee flexion this position for hamstring would be the best position to generate force when you take both the joints into account but if you are just looking at the hip joint it would be 35 degree of hip flexion with which the hamstring can produce a good force for extension coming to the last point that is the internal and external rotation or medial or lateral rotation now it's pretty simple over here the muscles which are on the medial side cause medial rotation there is semi membranosus and semi tendinosus and the biceps femoris which is on the lateral side will cause lateral rotation now however the semi membranosus and semi tendinosus they can do lateral rotation of the hip joint sometimes when your hip is in flexion so with that we are done with the topic now let's summarize the topic we talked about the gluteus maximus which is the largest muscle then we also talked about where they are attached and then its contribution for hip extension is more when your hip is in flex position that's where your glutes gets the stretch and it can generate a lot of force then we talked about the four parts of the hamstring the two biceps femoris then the semi membranosus and semi tendinosus how they help in extension at the hip joint and flexion at the knee joint along with medial and lateral rotation at the hip joint we also know that we have to mention about the active and passive insufficiency that hamstring undergoes at the hip joint okay so with that we finish up the topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please share it with your friends don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please like the video as it really helps me out and also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like me to cover and see you soon in the next video